recently power sector stocks like uh, you know hpl electric uh, ntpc and in particular the finance stocks rec and pfc have all been surging on reports of state governments handing out large smart meter installation contracts uh, that's part of the reason this scheme is part of the center's rdss scheme or the revamped distribution sector scheme whereby the center gives grants to states who install smart meters the smart meters are supposed to enable remote real time reading of power consumption which should enable better collection the other step the government has taken is in insisting on lps or a late payment surcharge for discoms which is why the power finance stocks may be uh, rising uh, the, the delayed power purchase is being pu punished by surcharges the fppas scheme or the fuel and power purchase surcharge scheme is also intended to regularly charge higher in keeping with changes in costs the hope is that all this has led to some improvement in the power sector or will lead to at least less losses for discoms and hence better finances for the entire sector generators and distributors are things really improving that's what we are discussing today with three experts mr vivek kumar devangan the chairman and managing director of rec the company has just reported excellent qr numbers harshvardhan dole uh, the power expert at uh, iisl he is the vp institutional equities and uh, sabya sachi mazumdar the senior vp ikra ratings so we have a debt expert an equity expert and of course uh, a power financer thank you very much gentlemen for sparing time mr devangan uh, let me uh, come straight to you uh, are you getting a sense that uh, discom finances you are financing them are you getting a sense that things have improved at all with the launch of revamped distribution sector scheme in 2021 things have started changing for better now mm. in fact with the launch of rds mm. the discoms have ma- taken very proactive action for reform measures the common department dues legacy subsidy dues they have prepared the da- trajectory and they have started liquidating that and in fact as part of pre qualification criteria uh, the all the state governments have started paying the the discoms subsidy in advance quarterly subsidy is being paid in advance mm. so that the atnc losses of discounts are improved by 5% earlier it was 22% in one year it has come down to 17% i hope that the financial turn around of discount is on its way now okay actually atnc losses uh, you cannot be denied uh, uh, sabesh sachi therefore to you uh, are you getting a sense i mean this is a large problem in terms of accumulated discom debt but are we even incrementally making any improvements because of whatever lps late payment surcharge introducing some discipline so basically as you see you know there has been a very significant reduction in atnc losses uh, almost like 5% reduction in one year now a part of that of course can be uh, attributed to the fact that there was a very significant uh, inflow of subsidies during 2022 Uh, normally you know the uh, uh, subsidy uh, collection efficiency is less than 100% but in 22 it was 109% so possibly many of the state governments had not only paid the, all the subsidy in time but also uh, you know given uh, liquidated perhaps some of their uh, earlier you know subsidy uh, arrears as well as paid something in extra so that is definitely a very positive development for the uh, overall sector as a whole and has brought down the improved liquidity position but again whether it remains to be sustained uh, you know remains to be seen further you know on uh, uh, tnd losses for the overall tnd losses uh, still remain somewhere around 17 18% and we'll have to bring it down further so that the government's own target of bringing uh, the overall atnc losses to 12 to 15% on a sustained basis is achieved okay so there is also uh, the current uh, uh, we have seen a lot of progress but still there is a fair way to go okay uh, just a word on this uh, subsidies which uh, uh, you know you are saying the state government's cleared on time in fy22 uh, is there isn't there a commitment on the part of the state governments was it not one of the clauses included if they had to avail of higher deficit 
you know, uh, during the COVID years, they could, uh, the state governments were allowed to run up a deficit, not three, but three and a half percent also. That was tied to power sector reforms. So you think that the subsidy payments will henceforth come on time because of these commitments? Yes, I would think so, because even other, even before this, it was not as if the subsidy, the gap in terms of the subsidy was very high. Uh, by and large, most okay. state governments were meeting the subsidy in a reasonably timely manner. Okay. So, uh, there is reason to be optimistic about at least, uh, you know, full subsidy, uh, full uh, collection efficiency being maintained on the okay. uh, subsidy okay. side. Okay, there are a lot of these acronyms thrown at, thrown at us, RDSS. Okay, smart meter, it lets you know remotely what is the reading. But uh, does that mean that money will be paid, collected? Yeah. The component of smart meter is club with prepaid smart meter. Okay. We have made it further that all the discounts have to install prepaid smart meters. It means that the consumer has to pay in advance to get the electricity supply. So it, it is collection efficiency, billing efficiency are inherent for implementation of prepaid smart metering. In the, in the country, we have to install about 25 crore consumers uh, are there. We have to install prepaid smart meters on Totex mode. Mm. We are also covering the, all the features and distribution transformers meter also we are uh, assisting. Mm. So that will help in improving the collection and billing efficiency for discounts. Mm. Okay. And only it will reduce the ATMC losses also. I get that, sir. But uh, from what we spoke to the power companies, most of them are not yet prepaid. But are there enough prepaid uh, meters installed, Mr. Devangan? Uh, the rollout of prepaid smart metering has just commenced, actually. Okay. Uh, today, about 17.5 lakh prepaid smart meters have already been installed. The award... Uh, for about 2.5 crore prepaid smart meter has already been placed by discounts and in the uh, next few months the order for about 20 crore prepaid smart meters are going to be placed by the discounts. Mm -hmm. Okay, 20 crore households will cover about 100 crore people. That will be a very good number. But you are at the moment talking about lakhs. Uh, so to come yeah. back to you, Harsh, uh, you know, give us some idea, first of all, whether this will actually reduce losses because at the moment... As Mr. Devangan just said, it is, you know, prepaid is still small. It's more smart meters. Uh, what is your sense in terms of both amount of coverage, numbers, timetable, and their, in their ability to stop the bleeding of discounts? So, firstly, it's a notable initiative and step in right direction. Uh, it allows elimination of human intervention in the billing process. CEA estimates that uh, the billing efficiency across the discounts is only 84 to 85 percent, for which almost a lakh of crore plus revenue loss incurs to the state discounts. And uh, it's actually far more than their annual losses. And to that extent, there is a need to automate the whole process of uh, billing, etc. And to that extent, if the government is playing sort of characteristic uh, approach, for uh, the state discounts to go ahead and implement smart metering, it's a great step. Uh, but having said that, it is not the only solution to revive the ATNC losses. I think uh, once you automate the billing, second step is basically to improve the collection efficiency, mm -hmm. which uh, is a gigantic task considering what the Indian uh, you know, state level uh, geopolitical situation is. A uh, lot of states still continue to give freebies. Exactly. And recently, I was I was reading in one of the uh, regional dailies that one of the south, uh, one of the southern states, has actually officially said that either they will be able to do development work or they will be able to give free power. And at a time when you are approaching elections, I'm not sure how well the focus will actually be on the development side. Okay. To that extent, uh, the next task is to go ahead and implement this, this prepaid metering, which will uh, be a significant milestone mm. to cut down ATNC losses. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, Sabisati, I will have to come to you also on this. Uh, uh, you explained that subsidy was uh, uh, brought down effectively, and you also explained with numbers that ATNC losses, uh, 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 commercial losses have clearly come down. But uh, do you see a very good spread of smart metering? What is the scope for prepaid meters? Has it even scratched the surface? And is that uh, one way 
uh, I mean, at least in the next three, four years, we won't be having this discussion. Okay. So, as you see, you know, the Star Smart Metering program has just started off and we have barely reached a little more than 1% coverage. So, definitely, once, you know, we get to a very high level, obviously, a lot of these problems are going to be sorted out. But there are a couple of other things also. Now, you know, what happened in over the last 10 years, there has been a very significant increase in rural electrification and getting electricity to the household. I mean, uh, earlier, you know, many villages were electrified, but it was not as if all households were being electrified. Mm. Now, what mm. happened, has happened over the last 10 years is because of various schemes, more or less we have been able to provide 100% uh, uh, household coverage. Now, what happened while we were able to increase the household coverage to uh, near full, the billing uh, billing and collection mechanism of many of the discounts, particularly those in the northern mm-hmm. parts of the country where, you know, the electrification of households was much less, mm-hmm. that did not keep pace. So, what was happening was that billing and collection was being done once in several months. So, let's suppose there's a bottom-up pyramid customer in a village in northern India who consumes, let's say, 200, 250 rupees worth of power. Uh, If you ask him to pay 250 rupees per month, it's very easy for him to do so. But if you are going to raise a bill on him in six months and ask him to pay 1500 rupees, it will be difficult for him to do so. So, that is also something which was resulting in, uh, you know, continued ATNC losses in many high in several states, in spite of the fact that, you know, a lot of work had happened at the 11 kb feeders as well as the distribution uh, task of feeders. Mm. So, a lot of steps are being taken there. For instance, many states have already started, you know, uh, handheld uh, meter reading that, that uh, you know, every month they have a roster that uh, this particular day of the month, this particular village is going to be covered. So, to a great extent, already steps are being uh, taken, uh, you know, Apart, quite apart from, uh, you know, smart meters or prepaid meters for ensuring that billing is being done on a more regular basis so that the collection improves. So that process is anyway on. And once, you know, we are able to put in smart meters and prepaid meters, this problem to a great extent, the uh, collection losses from the retail segment will come down. The other major uh, thing we must remember is part of the, you know, collection loss is also from the fact that many, uh, you know, uh, uti- uh, many uh, government utilities, mm. basically, you know, things like irrigation departments, uh, various, uh, you know, municipalities and panchayats, in many states, they are unable or uh, unwilling to pay to the discounts on a regular basis. Mm. As part of these various uh, reform measures, that is also proposed to be significantly tightened. So once, you know, this is done in a very uh, serious basis, for, from both, you know, for the retail customer uh, through smart meters as well as regular billing as well as from, uh, you know, these uh, institu- institutions, the, this quasi-government institutions, that should significantly bring down the uh, 18 mm-hmm. of okay. to the delivery of 12%. Okay. Okay. But along with that, we'll also have to look at some amount of tariff right? because even if you bring down, uh, you know, the at losses by further 4-5%, still uh, there will be a certain amount of gap mm-hmm. and for which... We, uh, the regulators would have to ensure that whatever, you know, regulatory assets have been built, they are collected through tariffs in a regular manner. Okay. You know, uh, Sagi Sachi, uh, I take your point that uh, collection would be eased uh, in far-flung areas, like you point out in the north, uh, and for very small uh, customers, where perhaps there is a willingness to pay, but ability is a problem, and even from the point of view of the discount collection, ability is a problem. But, uh, you know, the state with the biggest... Uh, what you very euphemistically call regulatory assets or actually, you know, unpaid bills is 89,000 crores for Tamil Nadu, relatively one of the best developed states and most well electrified states. Likewise, I can go on, you know, even states like Maharashtra, 44,000 crores in terms of discount dues. So, uh, while you can uh, perhaps ensure some kind of uh, regularity of collection from the small man who has just been electrified, how do you correct these monstrous losses? Especially that question to uh, the man who is financing them, REC. But in just a minute, sir, after this very short break. Welcome back. We have been discussing whether the recent power sector reforms like uh, smart metering, uh, like uh, uh, delayed payment surcharges 
can bring bring back some kind of financial stability to the power sector, both generators and distributors. I've been speaking with uh, the chairman manager of REC, Mr. Vivek Kumar Devangan, Harshwardhan Doli of IIFL, and Sabhi Sachi Mazumdar of ICRA Ratings. Gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Uh, Mr. Devangan, uh, we did do see some ray of light with uh, the smart metering and uh, the late uh, payment surcharge, which is forcing discoms to pay up. But what they do is they take the loan from you and pay the generators. Uh, we will just have tables running about how uh, REC and PFC have sanctioned more loans to the discoms. Uh, do you see any improvement in terms of their ability to pay and even their willingness to repay? Yeah, there has been substantial improvement with the introduction of late, pay late payment surcharge. The dues of the GENCOs and TRANSCOs, uh, the legacy dues, mm -hmm. they, uh, they had to, uh, they have prepared a trajectory and in maximum 48 installments, okay. a period of four years, they have to pay the legacy dues. And since, uh, with the introduction of LPS, they save around 12% interest mm -hmm. that uh, they were paying. So about this, saving about 16,500 crore per annum on account of uh, uh, non-payment of uh, LPS. Okay. One thing was what, what, what significant thing which has happened mm -hmm. is that now discounts has started paying the current dues of the uh, GENCOs and TRANSCOs. Yes. That is what has uh, really improved the situation. And legacy due, there is a trajectory and over a period of four years, mm -hmm. they'll be gradually reducing their uh, dues. So that's a very major reform. Yes. Go yeah. ahead, sir. Sorry. The department dues was more than 1 lakh uh, 30,000 crore. That has come down substantially to about 64,000 crore only. Mm -hmm. And with the introduction of prepaid, prepaid is part of it, we are asking them to put in the government department first. Uh -huh. Government department will not be able to avail electricity until, unless they pay the electricity bill in advance through prepaid smart meter. Okay. So okay. I hope that both this LPS and prepaid smart metering are going to play, uh, there will be a real game changer in improving the financial and operational efficiency of the distribution companies. Okay. Yeah, and that will not even mean an election problem. Uh, if the government departments are being asked, you know, there, there is no uh, election issue over there. Uh, but uh, Mr. Devangan, just one more doubt. Uh, have the NPAs of DISCOM started reducing? NPAs as in, you know, days past due. Yeah, that has also started uh, reducing. Okay, okay. so there is okay. a tangible improvement on the ground. Okay. Substantial improvement, yeah. Substantial, okay. Uh, Harsh, what's your sense? And I'm not asking you in terms of whether you will buy NTPC stock or Tata Power stock or HPL Electric stock. But more generally, are you seeing the financial health improving of the generators as well? since they are at the mercy of the distributors? Yeah, I think uh, one has to give it to the government that they have realized that uh, problem lies at both ends, both while supplying power as well as collecting the dues. And uh, while measures such as prepaid meters, smart meters will improve the cash flow situation, I think what is also necessary is timely tariff revision. If you were to run a check across uh, you know, all the states over the last, uh, you know, say five or eight years, the, the percentage increase in power tariffs across all India bases has been just about 2 to 3 percent. And that's quite concerning because the actual generation costs have grown much in excess of 2 to 3 percent. And if you actually were to turn around the discount, uh, in addition to improving the ATMC losses, etc., uh, the cost of actual power has to reflect in the end power tariffs. In my opinion, if the first step is right, uh, I'm hoping that the state and the central government will work together and pass on the actual cost to end consumers, which is the only sustainable solution to turn around the sector. Okay. Even as you speak, the other thing which yeah, I go ahead, sorry. The other thing which I've uh, kind of you know analyzed or noted is uh, thanks to sir, surge in the power demand across uh, the consumer base, including industrial, commercial and residential sectors, uh, the surplus so-called generation capacity that India had will no longer exist a couple of years later. And this realization has trickled down within the policy makers, which is kind of, you know, making proactive moves, such as fast tracking of, uh, you know, renewable energy capacity, or uh, CEA kind of, you know, in the recent uh, report advocating additional 13,000 megawatt of coal-based capacity. So these measures 
certainly will go long way in terms of you know planning the demand supply equation as well as you know improving the state of financial state of you know the discoms which is what is the need of the hour okay so more power supply and perhaps uh, more regular billing and higher tariffs actually you know when you were speaking we were running those uh, tariffs sought and tariffs approved by the state electricity regulatory commissions okay we are talking about SERCs uh, it's a table i picked up from sabya sachi's report uh, sabya sachi you know the uh, tariffs are not even hiked this year as much as last year you point out despite the government saying that you know they have to blend uh, uh, imported coal which would be expensive and if you look at the difference between tariffs sought and tariffs actually approved uh, there is still a wide gap uh, a uh, you know a 6 trillion accumulated dues is not going to go away even in 4 years but are you seeing incremental reduction of these accumulated losses and a reduction in fresh losses so basically you know uh, around 2020 21 the first year of pandemic obviously the total cash losses see i'm not looking at the book loss but i'm looking at the loss plus uh, we are also adding back the regulatory assets which would have been booked as income but not collected that would have peaked out at around somewhere around 90000 crores or thereabouts now while we don't have the current estimates given the uh, you know our estimate about you know subsidy receipt about atnc losses and power uh, cost increases uh, i would think that around currently the total losses will be somewhere around 50000 crores which is a substantial improvement but the 50000 crore itself will be a fairly large so out of the 50000 crore the book loss would be 30000 crore and that maybe 20 or 1000 crore would be a regulatory asset so to bring down the uh, you know uh, cash loss to zero we have to uh, you know further reduce by 50000 crore rupees on the base level plus whatever increases are taking place because of uh, higher uh, power purchase cost i mean fine we are getting a little bit of renewable energy also at lower cost but at the same time you know because of the blending of uh, you know coal. coal with imported coal there is an increase in thermal power tariff so whatever you know increase is taking place uh, in the power purchase cost of the utilities dot out as we pass so if you are to look for example for the current 50000 crores uh, you know law gap obviously this loss reduction of 4 to 5% will take care of about maybe 25 30000 but if you have to uh, take care of the balance even at the baseline another amount of 2 to 3% additional tariff hikes will be required in addition we'll have to provide tariff hikes to take care of further increases in the power purchase cost so that is broadly the ask that is required if we are to make the power sector truly uh, self sustainable on a cash basis thank you very much gentlemen let me tell you a brief history i did a similar discussion in 2003 when suresh prabhu introduced the electricity act we did a similar discussion in 2014 when the uday scheme was announced uh, by piyush goel and we are doing it again in 2023 in the hope that we will not have to do another discussion i won't be around but i hope uh, the numbers will be so small that we will not have to do another discussion on whether discoms are returning to financial health thank you very much for joining me in this special discussion in the romics there are more news and updates following